Hey, YouTube, you actually missed the dull yesterday because you got introduced uh, in overtime. By the way, I don't even want to... I don't want to belabor how bad the movie Catwoman is, but it did come to Canadian Netflix recently. Uh, so I've, I watched it in two parts. First part made it until roughly the reveal of the villain, which is Sharon Stone, who gets her power from a vino lotion. In the, in the final act of Catwoman, Sharon Stone almost kills Catwoman by um, breaking a window on, in a skyscraper that's supporting her weight. But before she does it, she says... It's game over. Then Halle Berry as Catwoman says, guess what? Dot, dot, dot. It's overtime. Definitely has to rank on one of the worst one-liners in action movie history. It just, I, I don't cringe too much. I kind of enjoy some cringe humor, but... Yes, then right, she's about to fall out the window. Then she's, she says it's overtime and she springs up like 25 feet in the air to land on like a utility walkway close to the ceiling of the room that the battle takes place in. Anyway, then she's like, oh, right, I'm Catwoman. And she like destroys the villain. Anyway, um, so this is Housel. We look at a, a house, we have to guess within 5% how much this house costs. There's a lot of variables, obviously. Size, uh, zip code, location, relevant uh, school districts that you're in the catchment for, but we try to have fun with it. A apparently, as well, there is a normal one, listed.fun, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll check that one out next. Yesterday, just for, pref uh, just for perspective, yesterday's uh, Housel was a $68.8 million mansion in uh, Malibu, California. Apparently, I've never been on live television before. So I'm looking at this. Um, to, to me, just, I mean, I'm playing a little geo-guesser here. To me, this looks like Montana, Dakota, something like that, um, Wyoming. So we'd expect the prices to maybe be a little lower, but I don't know. Maybe this is Jackson Hole. Maybe this is very pricey. It's got what appears to be, I don't know, a, a six-car garage that also might be a barn and also might be a house in and of itself, maybe a guest house or something. It's a ranch style. I'm going to start off, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start, and keep in mind I live in an inflated property market. I'm going to start and say that this is a $4 million house, but I, it might come with a staggering amount of land as well. You know what, because of the fact that this, I'm realizing now this might come with like 30 acres of land, I'm going to bump this up to an $8 million. That's too high. Okay, that's too high. It has its own... This is the house where they filmed Meet the Parents, the classic volleyball scene where uh, Greg Fokker breaks his uh, sister-in-law's nose. It's got, indoor pool is extravagant, but it's not like, you know... It's not as extravagant as having like a, your own bowling alley or something like that. Or, you know, I, well, I'm trying to think of what... Your own laser tag arena or something. It's a plastic slide... I was friends with a kid for like a few years in school who had his own indoor pool. And they were rich, but they weren't like, you know, they weren't Warren Buffett rich. They were just like, you know, more wealthy than you could ever imagine. They weren't like more wealthy than like a calculator could imagine. I'm going to go with my original guess. I'm going to put this at $4 million. That's still too high. Okay. It's very interesting to me. The home theater is something that a lot of people are into. You know what's great about this? I, I can uh, look at chat because chat doesn't know either. It is 10,000 square feet. Holy shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, the home theater, I think as a kid, I always thought that the, like a home theater would like this would be a sick thing to have in your house. But I don't want to go to like a different room in my house just to watch a movie. I just want to watch it like in my living room on the sofa or something like that. I don't want to like just go walk 150 feet and then go sit in a chair that has a cup holder. I just want to just want I got a coffee table, I got a TV. I I do think it's a little too extra. 
Like, the, not enough people live in Nebraska to actually fill this theater out anyway. What's the point of having, like, 35 seats in a state that's only got 31 people? I'm not, a, I'm not home theater pilled. Home gym, absolutely. And that's not just, like, because I, like, exercise more than movies. It's just because, you know, I can watch a movie on my TV already, but, you know, I'm not going to just squat my kitchen island or something like that. Anyway... There's other reasonable solutions. So four million was too high. It's ten thousand square feet. I'm not going under two and a half on this guess. That's still too high. It's ten thousand square feet. Six bedrooms, six baths. They got some shuffleboard. They got a pool table. They should, in just my two cents. They should hire like an interior designer. I mean, they got, like, the lights, but then the, the basement is, like, heavy, like, contractor core. Like, they just finished building it, and they didn't want to put any extra money into the build. I get that they probably paid through the teeth for the lights, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it down to 175. It's, I, I can't stress this enough. It's 10,000 square feet. So what is, we're getting down to the point where it's, like, $100 a, a square foot. Oh, <laughs> we were in there. You're a Housel Baron. You won in four guesses. I don't even want to know how much that shit would be in Vancouver, because I also don't know like the acreage that it has. But realistically, I think you would be looking at like $16 million plus. Like it, because it's ten thousand square feet. You'd be paying more than a thousand bucks Canadian per square foot, at least. I mean, you'd be you'd be looking at <laughs> maybe maybe twenty five million, maybe maybe somewhere in there. I don't know. Okay, let's. Is it listed dot fun? Where's the buy it now button? Listed dot fun. Listed dot fun. Listed.fun, real estate price guessing game. Okay. Now we're talking. This is a little bit more like what I'm looking for. Okay, hang on. Up means guess. My, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just learning. You got to get within 1% to win. And a diagonal arrow means you're within 10%. Okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm getting my screen region set up. This is more along the lines of what I was looking for. So this is a... I mean, this is probably like the average starter home from the 1950s. I'm going to guess it's about 1,300 square feet. Nothing wrong with this house. It, it, it obviously super depends on where it is right now. I'm going to say this is somewhere in the, in the slightly... Well, I'm going to say it's a markedly below average price for an American home in 2023. I'm going to put it at 285000 I was I was way too high. Okay. Um... It's in Berlin Heights, Ohio. I was more than 10% off. Give me 210,000. I was more than 10% off. It's a single family home. Yeah, I got eyes. <laughs> I'm familiar. Um, seven guesses left. I mean, we're going to get this. Give me 165,000. Sold for 165000 You're crazy. I'm, I'm the best player in the world at listed. I don't, I don't know enough about Ohio. Honestly. What did I say? By the way, what did I say? 1,300 square feet? I'm crazy. Previous price was 85000 Sold 10 years ago. I mean, what, it doubled in 10 years? Said like an average uh, cumulative growth rate of 7% annually, Peepo G? Why wouldn't you just buy the S&P 500 instead? Oh, because you can't raise your kids in the S&P 500? Have you ever tried? Okay. 
kind of a steal. It did look, I mean, again, I don't know the neighborhood. Looks fine to me. I got nothing against it. Ohio's cheap. It's, it's crazy that Ohio is so cheap. When I know multiple cities in the state. Like when Nebraska is cheap, I'm like, yeah, it's Nebraska. What, it's got Lincoln and Omaha. I don't know anything else. That would be one million in Vancouver. No, it would not be one million. It would be, it would, thirteen hundred fifty four square feet. It would probably be like one and a half. And when you like toured it, you would be like, "This is a teardown," and we gotta like build a new house on top of the land. the The assessed value of the land would be like one and a half Canadian, and then the building would be worth like one hundred and seventy five thousand. And the land would be worth 1.3, 1.35. And someone would buy it, tear it down, and then probably build like the ugliest fucking house of all time on top of it. <laughs> this looks like Tony Montana's wet dream. Not that this house is like a looker necessarily, but you know, it was built 70 years ago. Okay, let's, let's go back to the top here. <clears throat> Tradle is not loading. Oh, it's loading. Okay. Holy cow. That's a, I'm a realtor. That's not right. Also, P.S. I'm not a realtor. <laughs> Fair enough. Today's Tradle is... It seems a little insane to me. Mollusks is 60% of their exports. 406 million, pretty small. Planes, helicopters, or spacecraft? <laughs> Mollusks? I mean, wool? <laughs> planes? Planes and mollusks? Well, okay, who makes planes? United States of America. I'm going to go out on a limb and say... Um, this is not America. I bet they export more than $406 million, and I bet 60% of their exports are not mollusks. Um, the European Union, via, you know, um, Airbus, and then probably, um, I mean, I don't know who's making planes for, for Russia. I don't know who's making, I'm assuming that most Asian carriers use Boeing and Airbus, but I could be wrong. Maybe it's not planes. Maybe it's helicopters and or spacecraft, in which case I have no idea. Wool always makes me think of like New Zealand, which has me thinking this could be like a Pacific Island country. But I mean, I this is just off the top of my head. I, I see wool. I'm going a Pacific Island area. Give me Papua New Guinea. And then I don't know. I can't imagine that they make spacecraft there. But OK, we are not even close. Can I get a, a check here? How, how could something be southeast of Papua New Guinea? <laughs> it's 13,000. I got to go around the horn, man. So this is like, we're basically, because the diameter of the earth is like, I don't know, like 30,000 kilometers. So we're basically as far away from the right answer as we could get. Um, which has me thinking that this maybe is, what about, uh, Cabo Verde, Cape Verde? I'm just trying to get a bead on this now. Okay. I'm in a scary place here. It's 60% is Southwest of Cape Verde, but Southeast of Papua New Guinea. Okay, this means it's South America. <laughs> I, I think. Is it Uruguay? It's a lot closer. It's south of Uruguay, which leaves you with like uh, Argentina or, or parts of Chile or 
the Falkland Islands, which we tried to play yesterday. Oh! <laughs> I'm so happy we guessed it yesterday because otherwise it would not have been top of mind. Holy cow. That makes sense. Now that, now that you see it, it makes sense. A British administered island is this or is it an argentinian administered i listen i'm just ignorant i'm not trying to wade into the discussion here manufacturing like a very high industrial part at 123 million dollars a year i could see that yeah maybe like maybe they support a major carrier They aren't making planes. They're selling planes they got in storage. What are you, like the chief import expert, the chief trade officer for Malvinas? How do you know that? You don't know. If you're in my Twitch chat, you don't know that. What are you talking about? Art Vandalay? Okay, we're on Globla. Who's Malvinas? Isn't that... Um, Leonardo DiCaprio's wife from Inception. We always start Algeria. 3,000 kilometers away from Algeria. Why don't you toss me a Belarus? Oh, 1,000 kilometers away from Belarus. Why don't you give me a Georgia? Even warmer. 420 blaze it away from Georgia. I mean, you could always just go straight up Russia. That's adjacent to the answer. Well, that really narrows it down. Um, let me get a Kazakhstan. I spell it that way every time. I spell it the Sean Connery way. It's Kazakhstan. I'm crazy. No joke. If we do geographic dulls every day before the real stream starts... One day, I will actually be worldly without having left my own home. <laughs> now, start me here. I, I feel like I could know what um, this is, but I don't. So I'm just going to do the classic strat of starting with what we just used as our successful guess. It's 3,000 kilometers east, sorry, west of Kazakhstan. Could you be Austria? I don't think so, but... Or Romania? 90, it's 156 kilometers away from Austria. Are you Croatia? It's north of Croatia, south of Austria. <laughs> Are you Slovenia? I'm crazy. I'm nutty. He's got it all figured out. I don't even need to see the map. I'll, I'll picture the map in my own head. I can see how Slovenia sort of looks like a chicken. Okay, now we're in the movie section. September 17th, 2004. Oh, baby. I don't know any of these immediately, and none of them made very much money at all. Um, this is box office game. This is scary. Because, honestly, um, none of these... I mean, $15 million opening is is nothing. Like, that's not a blockbuster. New Line Cinema. Let, let's get some... Give me an actor on this one. Jude Law. This could be Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. He's nuts. Okay, minimize that one. Touchstone Pictures doesn't even exist anymore. Open to 9 million. Give me an actor. Bernie Mac. This is probably Mr. 3000. We'll submit that. Minimize it. Get it out of my face. Sony Pictures... Total gross as of its second week, 37 million. Give me an actor. Mila Jovovich. This is Resident Evil uh, 2, which is, I believe, called Revelations. Resident Evil. Give it a set. 
Oh, it's apocalypse. It's apocalypse. Okay, close that one up. Universal opened to 7 million. Give me an actor. Kirsten Dunst. 2004. This, it's before Marie Antoinette. Kirsten Dunst. Could it be The Virgin Suicides? I think it's from like 2001 because Lost in Translation is from like 2003. Yeah, okay, that can't be right. Kirsten Dunst leads the movie. Let me get actor two. Paul Bettany. This is Wimbledon. <laughs> I feel like Geo Rainbow for real, man. I feel like Geo Rainbow. And then New Line Cinema. Let me get the actor. Chris Evans is from 2004. Let me get Not Another Teen Movie. Oh, I thought for sure. This is the, the perfect score. Okay, okay, okay. Relax. Chris Evans, 2004. <sighs> Let me get actor two. Kim Basinger. Probably played his mom. Let me get tagline. If the signal dies, so does she. This is one last call. The call. This is cell. Cell. Oh, fuck. I know this movie. Like, I, I know the name. It's a horror movie. Ah, uh, I don't think I'm going to get the name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal all hints on this one. A young man receives an emergency phone call on his cell from an older woman. She claims to have been kidnapped, and the kidnappers have targeted her child, her husband next. Her husband and child next. I give up. This one's going to burn me up. Cellular! <laughs> The cell, cellular, cell, one last call, come on. Dude, that was a great, I know I'm in 70th percentile, but that was a great performance. Sky Captain, Mr. 3000, Resident Evil 2, and Wimbledon? Holy. We did go a little insano mode. Oh. Cellular, it sounds like that. Oh, I guess it's the, the cell, or um, not the cell. The call is that one that they make fun of in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's like the premise is, what if your phone killed you? Oh, man. Okay, today's Cine 2 Nerdle. Average score, 4 out of 5. No, in Phone Booth, the bad guy is not a phone booth. The bad guy is Kiefer Sutherland. He's a sniper. Colin Farrell is trapped in a phone booth. Okay, I'm just looking. I'm just looking. I see Little Women. I see Florence Pugh. I also, I'm imagining maybe there's a women talking in here. We have to talk about Kevin, which has Tilda Swinton in it. And is a psychological thriller. Florence Pugh is part of Little Women, which I, I, I don't know what, is General Mandible in that? Is that who Bob Odenkirk plays? We got animated, probably General Mandible, I'd have to guess. Almost Little, well, th this can just reveal something for us. Let's, let's hot swap these. I'm going to assume maybe March and Colony are both part of Ants, maybe, and then Animated. Little Women. Almost Famous Frances McDormand Band. Animated and March Swap. So we got Almost Famous. We, we have to talk about Kevin. I, I, this must be Ants. And then this is Little Women. I don't know who the hell is in uh, Women Talking. I know it was nominated for Best Picture this year. But then there's, there could be other stuff here. Let's think about Florence Pugh. She's in a psychological thriller. It's called Midsummer. Nothing else is really related. I guess uh, there's a cult. It's not a colony, though. Tilda Swinton, she's in a lot of stuff. That's not helpful. 
Kevin Smith is in, uh, or Kevin James is in Paul Blart Mall Cop. March, anim Colony March, animated, animated women, animated women, psychological thriller, animated women talking about bands. I'd see that movie. Florence Pugh, of course, in um, Black Widow. Animated Little. Is the mom from Stuart Little is not Frances McDormand or Tilda Swinton, right? Like Little animated Frances McDormand. And of course, Stuart Little is a psychological thriller. Has Frances McDormand been in some psychological thrillers? Yeah, for sure. Blood Simple. I don't know if you'd call Fargo psychological, but she's it's a thriller. Three Billboards. <clears throat> I think I'm washed. I, yeah, I think I'm washed. I'm going to, let's do some plausible swaps and see if we get lucky. Francis McDormand, psychological thriller that maybe also had Florence Pugh in it. Okay, no. Nope. Um, how about a Tilda Swinton famous women? How about a... Uh, I have no clue. <laughs> okay, I'm, I, I, I threw. What's the solution here? Women Colony Talk, Francis McDormand. That's women talking. <laughs> Even though I, all I knew about women talking was that it was nominated for Best Picture. I just, I honestly, even knowing that it was likely, I, I couldn't tell you what the four elements were. I didn't even know it had Francis McDormand in it. Highly recommend. It's real good. What do you mean? You haven't seen all the Best Picture nominees? I'll do you one better. I haven't seen any of the Best Picture nominees. I haven't seen Everything Everywhere All at Once. I haven't seen Top Gun Maverick. Didn't see The Whale. Didn't see Tar. But you've seen Wimbledon? The, the most fucked up part about it is I have not seen Wimbledon. <laughs> I, but for some reason, it was locked in my brain. I didn't get it on Kirsten Dunst, but Kirsten Dunst, Paul Bettany, my, my brain went... Zzz. That's Wimbledon. Nope, didn't, didn't see Banshees either. What happened? You used to be cultured? I don't have time to be cultured anymore. Hey, honey, just sit in your high chair. I'm going to sit down and watch Tar, a three-hour and three-minute-long slow burn from Todd Phillips. Just, just watch your iPad, honey. That might not be Todd Phillips. I'm pretty sure Todd Phillips is the guy who directed Joker and also sucked on Amy Smart's toes in Road Trip. But <laughs> Todd Field, that's it. Todd Field. <laughs> oh. Movie to movie. This week's all about um, Leon the Professional, huh? So we basically, we, we got to find a way to get to Gary Oldman or probably Natalie Portman. Gary Oldman or Natalie Portman. It might be a faster collect, uh, connection. Oh, you okay, so you go Christopher Lee. He's Count Dooku in Star Wars Attack of the Clones, which stars Natalie Portman, who's in Leon the Professional. 
Sorry. The professional, because I don't have the accent aigu. There you go. They, they might as well just call this week Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Because that is how you can connect Natalie Portman to any uh, European actor from the mid-2000s. Okay, now we're in the gaming section. This is Guess the Game. This, to me, looks like... Uh, like an isometric game. Likely a strategy game. Let me get a... Um, let me get From Dust. It's not From Dust. Metacritic score 87. I'd like to go back on that strategy stuff. I don't think this is a strategy game. Maybe this is a cutscene. Maybe this is a Total War game. No, probably not. Um, I'm going to skip this one. I got nothing percolating. This is a World of Warcraft of some sort. It's a role-playing game. Oh, no kidding. Maybe this is a Divinity Original Sin. Yay! <laughs> their bones are their money. Now we're getting out of games to go to something that's not a game. Ice hockey. This is where the viewership retention hits zero. Let's see. Show me Quinn Hughes' silhouette. Ah, oh, that is not Quinn Hughes. Something's not right about this. I'm just going to say right off the bat that looks like Brady Kachuk to me. It's not Brady Kachuk, but he is 23 and he plays in the East. He plays in the Metropolitan Division. New York, New Jersey, the other New York, Carolina. And other teams. <laughs> Something's not right with the hair there. 23? Let me get a Capo Caco. Oh, sorry. What was I thinking? Okay, he does play in the Metro Division. 23? Let me get a Jasper Brat. Jasper Brat. Okay. Sorry, he is 24. That's my mistake. Okay, let me get a um, let me get an Andre Svechnikov. Okay, uh, we got the, the age is narrowed down, that's for sure. Let me get a um, 23. Let me get a um, Noah, what's his name? Noah Dobson. Let me get a Noah Dobson. He is Canadian, but he doesn't play on the Islanders. Who else plays in the Metro? <laughs> it must be... Tampa and Florida, 23, he's drafted, 2016, could it be a Matthew, no, because Brady Kachuk, is the, he's not going to be the same age, mm, I'm, I'm in tough on this one. He's from Canada, he's from Canada? I don't have an answer. I think I, I throw myself to chat on this one. Wait, you're right. He's a center or a goalie? I didn't even think about goalie. And also Washington. I don't think I can name someone under 37 on Washington. Try Tristan Jari, okay? Tristan Jari. He's not, a, he's not a goalie, so he's a center. And he's on Washington. And he's young. Morgan Frost. Oh, that would be the right age. Oh, <laughs> You almost got it. Look at it. it's all it's green lines like all the way across. Good guess. He's on Washington or the Blue Jackets. I don't know, man. Can I just give up? I'm going to say Wayne Gretzky.
Wait, who did the Columbus claimed a bad player off of the Canucks this year? What was his name? Literally, we played them, and then like right after that game, we put the guy on waivers, and while he was still in town, they were like, oh, we got him. Yeah, Lane Peterson. Nope, it was Liam Foodie. There you go. This game is impossible, man. I feel like I've heard of his name. I mean, we were freaking... Look how close we were on the Lane Peterson guess. If they weren't completely different guys, like, <laughs> that would have been a great guess. <laughs> It's so right team, conference, division, position. He's one year too old, two years too old. Right country and like two numbers low. Come on. And now we're back to video games. Okay, we got the three game dolls. Hmm. I feel like I know this. Uh, the cover art is like too easy. If even I know it, it's too easy. This is a Call of Duty Black Ops. I'm going to say it's Black Ops 2. I'm going to say it's Black Ops 1. I'm crazy. Okay. Then artwork. Hmm. I don't know it immediately. But I could, I will get it in time, I feel like. It's got some double fine type business there. Give me a skip first. Is this is a Rayman, actually. Some sort of Rayman. Let's call it Rayman Origins. Nope. I mean, that, that's Rayman. Bro, this is Rayman. It's Rayman. Wait a minute. Hang on. None of this is correct? Or wouldn't this be red if it was incorrect? Could, could this be Rayman Legends? It is Rayman Legends. Okay, I think I was overthinking it. It's a pretty good guess. I'm proud of myself. And then the, the most impossible of all. The ultimate game doll. Rayman Legends. This, uh, we, it's earlier than 2013, and it's not a platformer. And it came out on uh, one, of, one of the consoles of all time. You know what? Take me back to 2005 and give me Demon's Souls. This might give me the 2019 or 2020 version now that I think about it. Um, it's single-player, multiplayer, or cooperative. Hmm. It's not from Ubisoft, and it's not a side view. And it's not a, an adventure or a platformer. How about Final Fantasy VII? You ever hear about that? Okay. It came out on... We can do some math. It came out on PC, PS4, and or Xbox One. There's not a strategy, role-playing, or adventure game. It is a single-player game with, with club sauce, and Sony was Sony or Square was involved in it in some way. Let me get a Tomb Raider 2014. Let's just go with uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider then, just to make sure we got the right one. Okay? Still, the consoles haven't told us anything, but it's either... It's a shooter... That was not... Oh, this is a different Square Enix. Motherfucker. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Maybe it's a Sony shooter. From pre... This Killzone Shadowfall. Ah, it's a first person shooter. It did not come out on the PS4. And it's, that means it's not from Sony. Okay. Which means it must be a Square Enix first-person shooter? <laughs> I'm fucked. <laughs> um, 
and it's not on it didn't come out on the PS4. It came out on PC and or Xbox One. Um what about the syndicate? Oh, they don't even have it. That's EA anyway. Wrong saga. First person shooter. For the X for the PC probably is the most likely outcome here. And it's between nineteen ninety seven and twenty thirteen. Um, how about the game Black for PlayStation 2 and PC, maybe? Okay, so it's later than 2006. That's EA as well. It's like single player and co op. Give me a one time clue, please. It's from 2012. Could it be. Dishonored? No. Nope. It's not that, but it is from 2012. I mean, Dishonored is kind of a shooter. Don't insult me. Could it be... I mean, I just... I, I, I feel like Square Enix has published like one first-person shooter and I don't know what it is right now. So I'm going to hold down the guest box. I'm going to say Super Mario Bros. You? I'm going to say Super Mario Bros. 3. And I'm going to say Super Mario Brothers 2. Call of Duty Black Ops 2? What the fuck? Square Enix was the pub dev? They're the pub dev of... Like what? On the PSP or something? They published the Wii U port? Oh, brother. We got like a... It's not a false positive, but it wasn't a positive positive. We should, we never should have guessed Final Fantasy VII, man. It screwed us over. Screwed us over. Okay, this is um, Rotten Tomatoes Daily. Three words. It's a horror slash mystery thriller from 2018. It's loved by critics and fairly well liked by the audiences as well. It's three words. Give me next clue. The film's nail-biting tension makes for pleasing genre thrills and a conduit for parental anxiety. As good a film as you'll see this year. This is Ma. <laughs> as good a film as you'll see this year. Next clue. Rusty Nail! It's a quiet place, of course. I'm a little embarrassed it took me till the third clue. Quiet Place is pretty good. I got nothing against The Quiet Place. 96 for that garbage? What do you... You hate it? They didn't give it a 96. 96% 96 of critics that saw it said this is like a, an okay time at the multiplex. I'm still mad. Oh, oh that's fine. I'm just... I'm not trying to defend every critic of all time I'm just saying and finally chrono photo a quiet place did radicalize me on hating uh, movie theater snobs though because so many posts on uh, about a quiet place were like I saw this in theaters and the person in front of me in the movie theater was eating popcorn the whole time. They should not allow you. It completely ruined the tension of the, the film. They should not allow popcorn to be sold to people that are going to see A Quiet Place. Of course they're eating popcorn, idiot. You're at the movie theater. Yes, you are the asshole. 
Why, why TA? Am I the asshole for going to the movies and being mad that other people are eating popcorn? Yeah, it's a popcorn store. Okay, I mean, this is old. This is a, a horse-drawn carriage with no uh, cars in sight. I'm going to say that this is like 1905. I, I should have gone even earlier, honestly. That's not even a horse. You're right. That's a, that's a donkey. Holy cow. This is New York City, baby. This is the most offensive sign I've ever seen in my entire life. Nathan's famous stop here. Arrows, bright red. It looks like a YouTube thumbnail. Others imitate. This is the original. This is the only original. Nathan's famous. Follow the crowd. Nathan's famous. Open all year. Nathan's famous. Nathan's frozen dessert. This is crazy. There's so many people. But it's New York. There's probably a lot of people at, like, at all times. This to me, I'm going to say this is 1955. <laughs> crazy. Okay. These are American... Um, fighter jets. We're going to say that this is probably 1942. Nutty. This to me certainly looks like a mall ice cream shop in the early 80s. I haven't seen Stranger Things season three, but I'm going to guess that this is the third season of Stranger Things. Give me a 1982 on this. Holy cow. We've had this one before. I don't remember specifically when it was. It definitely gives off more of a mid-80s vibe than an early 90s. Let me get an 86 on this. 89. 42, 62. Pretty good. Pretty good. You had this photo before? I believe I may have mentioned that. Hang on. Do you have watching without audio flare? If not, I'm going to force that upon you. We did a pretty good job on these today, though. 